What's fucking 25 times 2? 50. What? <laughs> well done. <laughs> Welcome back to Basic Maths with OC Fan uh, TV. Yeah, right. Was <laughs> showing off this Seminole County education again over here, boys. I'm proud of you. 69 yeah. hey, times we're one. We're tonight, too. Look at, look at that. We've almost saw our lines. Yeah, whatever that school is. 69 times one. 69 times one? Yeah. Episode 69 Seven. of OC Fan yeah. TV. Oh, God. Yes, well done, we've made it. We have made it. We honestly were hoping we could have started this off with the party lights and the whole dance party because Oscar would be gone. But we're here. We're doing the. Uh, we're doing the thing. Uh, yeah. f- first ever watch along. Pent witty well. Pent witty well. Pent witty well. It went pretty well. It went. No. It wittily went. English <laughs> is tough. <laughs> and the Rays are down eight zero to the Reds right now. So <laughs> it's just. You're just having a day. Hey, well done to a Cincinnati team actually doing well, though, because Cincinnati got railed by St. Louis. Yeah. What yeah. was it? Was it 5 1 final? 5 1 final. Good Lord. With a certain someone back on the goal sheet. Mm, fucking Nicholas Giochini. Fucking let go for nothing. Should have kept him. He should have been on the. I mean, obviously, now we say that, but. I was saying that the whole time he was here. Yeah, I mean. You, but you were kind of mid with him, though, right? I don't know how I really felt because I don't think he got a really good stretch of games. Right. And no attacker ever looks good in our fucking system, so it's kind of hard to see how you feel about it. I mean, dude was lighting it up over in France. We knew he could score, and he leaves us and immediately is on the score sheets. Yep. So I was going to save this to later. My thing about Duncan, like in our team, we need someone that plays like Duncan. He's like clean on the ball. He can release pressure at times, but – you're always going to find him in the box. And he's always in positions to score. And he's the best player at that right now. And the way we play, we need someone like that. Mm-hmm. The difference between him and Kara, he's more clinical. Uh, the the difference difference between more him, there's like 15 different differences. <laughs> no, mm-hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, boys, like Kara's in and around the box. He's in those areas to get those opportunities to score. So, obviously, you know, the the reason we hate his finishing ability is because he's in places to score. Like, we see him and Duncan mm-hmm. in and around the same areas. The difference is, is Duncan does have a higher work rate. He's got more He'll pace, yeah. you know, and he's clinical. He's m- not clinical, but he's more clinical than Kara is. For the amount of chances and the amount of minutes that Duncan's had, for him to already be, you know, on the score sheet twice and had the opportunity to win the game for us in Tigres, like, that's really the only glaring big chance I think he's missed all mm-hmm. season. Like, he's more clinical and he's got more pace. That's really the difference between the two right now. So the difference between those two is that I don't know if Carr is always in the right positions to score, but when he is, he's hit or miss, whereas with Duncan, as from what we've seen, he's, he's you know, he's scoring goals. Yeah, except for that one chance, the T-Rich chance. I feel like no, with Carr... When he gets in those positions, he always tries to, like, overcomplicate it. And meanwhile, Duncan just does, it. does the smart thing. The simple. Yeah, the simple thing. Yeah. So, Kara, you know, we, we talked about him now. Let's move on to Enrique. Dino. 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 <laughs> <laughs> called him Dino. He He's looks like a <laughs> McDonald's figurine <laughs> that you would pull out of a Happy <laughs> Meal. Okay. So... Disappointing, yes. Does he fit our system? <laughs> he could if we played two strikers. If him and Duncan played off of each other, and then you you had Ojeda and or Facundo, and I say and or because I just I don't see a way that you can have Enrique, Duncan, Ojeda, Facundo, and Mo on the pitch at the same time. It's too many players similar playing style, and they like to play in the same spots. So. If you had Enrique and then uh, Duncan playing off each other with o- Ojeda or Facundo right there, yeah, I'd like to see that. Happen. So Facundo, or I'm sorry, let's stick with uh, Enrique right now, and then we'll move on to Facundo because that's also a big talking point that we have right now. Dave, Enrique, does he fit in our system? From what I've seen, I can't. I've Fuck, English is tough today. Yeah, we're all struggling. I haven't <laughs> seen enough of him to make a statement on that. I wasn't able to watch the Minnesota game or anything. 
so I can't really say. I want to see more from him, though, or at least more of him. You have an opinion? Like I said, I don't think he fits how we play right now. In the way we like, we like build up and like the chances that are presented to our striker, I don't feel feel like he fits that the best. Mm. In which case, Duncan would. So then we've signed two strikers in the past two years that just don't fit oh, how we play. It's fucking Oscar Pereira it comes back to him once again. Oh, is that fully on him at this point, or would yes. Ricardo Moreira have a say in it? Would the the rest of the well, scouting no, 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 have a say in it? Because you see players come in here and then they leave, and then they're they're doing they're doing their thing. We see it consistently, man. Like like Alvarado, oh, gone. No, he's done. He's gone, and he he was up for. What like player of the season for his club when he went on his loan? Yeah, and like Venezuela or something. Yeah, but but, like Alvarado, right? yeah. but y- you're seeing somebody that could never produce for us go somewhere else and produce. Now you see Nicholas Giochini do it. You're seeing Juan look a lot better than he looked in the attacking third than he ever looked here. Yeah. Like, and my whole thing is, you saying it might be um, Ricardo Morera. Mm. Oscar's always gonna have a say in the players we sign. So obviously there's something that Oscar is telling Ricardo and then Ricardo brings that player in and we just don't know how to use him. Yeah, I then I also it, to myself go back to saying well there's one of those two between Oscar and Ricardo that's getting recruited to Brentford right now. So <laughs> it's probably it's doing, probably yeah. not the one that's getting recruited to Brentford. So, yeah, you brought it up already, and it was a big talking point. It's been a big talking point in the fan base up till this point. Facundo Torres, does he still play for us? Who? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's disrespectful, but I was going to say. <laughs> no, I That's mean, really disrespectful for the shit that he did last year. No, I mean, dude, he's phenomenal. Trust me, we respect everything he's done for us last year. This year, you score a pen. Yeah. Do we were seven games into the season? Yes. Plus two in outside competition? Mm-hmm. So you've had nine games and you have one goal contribution? Eight. Seven and a half, really. Missed a game international and played 45 in the one he oh, came that's back. That's fair. Okay. How many did he miss? But yeah. So he missed one and he played 45. Yeah. He missed yeah. Philly? That was it. We only That was the only game we missed and for international. Charlotte or? came back and he played 45. So, eight and a half, seven, seven and a half. half, somewhere, somewhere in that range. Yeah, doesn't matter. One goal contribution. The man really almost hit us with a double oh seven. <laughs> uh, can it really be all on him though? Because Ojeda has, I know, two goals. Don't know the assists off the top of my head. Then Duncan has two and one, and Gulo now. Uh, his crossbar hit doesn't count as an assist, but he has a goal. I think he has another goal this season. He has two goals. Two. So, I mean, our attack is just spread out thin, right? Just like the, the statistically with goals and assists is spread out thin. And for him to have one and only be on a pen, maybe he's just drawing the short end, the short straw, whatever that saying is, short end of the stick. Um, but he's supposed to be like our star boy, $30 million release clause. Maybe he's getting shafted by Oscar's tactics a little bit, but you do expect better from him being like the name that he is in the city. So who knows? Do you think it boils down to the pressure on him that is on him this year? No. I think it's the curse of the baby. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Bro, I'm telling you, it ruins all our players. <laughs> Slagle's next. <laughs> uh, according to some yeah. people, he was player of the match last game. So. Um, I just feel like there's more pressure on him to succeed this year because last year it was like, yeah, you're the big name, you're the d- young DP, but like nobody really knew what to expe- expect from him. Yeah. Now he's got the links from Arsenal, from other yeah, other big clubs rumored to to be interested in him that he has to perform. Now he's do you think he's overcomplicating it? Yeah. I think he's in it like I said, I think he's in his head. I c- he could be in his own head. I don't think it's a uh a uh, pressure thing because you you brought in Ojeda, you have Angulo now scoring, you have Duncan now scoring, so you have all these other guys to like bring goals and assist with you, right? So I feel like the the pressure thing could not be it as much as just him being in his own head, 
because you bring in these guys to help him contribute in the attacking third, and it's just not happening for him. The difference between all those people that we brought in and him is that he's on every fucking billboard in this town. He's in every p- promo. He's in every picture. Like, he is our guy. Mm-hmm. That's what I mean by the pressure. Like, you didn't see as much of Facundo being on stuff last year. Like, Alexander Pazzo was still in the club, and when he was playing, like, that's a huge name. Like, we're going to try to push that. Trying to sell Cara, too. You know, we tried, to, <laughs> we tried to sell Cara last year, and it didn't work out. But, like, you look at, like I'm saying, like, that's our star boy, like you said. And I think that's where that pressure comes in is, like, you see the town – respects you the club respects you and we all want you to perform so Mm -hmm. yeah but i definitely think the links and the european talks and stuff like that like when that happens to a player you're obviously going to feel the pressure from that stuff uh so minnesota you want to talk a little bit about that (laughs) (laughs) yeah i'm lucky to get out of there with three points to be honest not because of minnesota's minnesota played like trash too just it wasn't the best game of football but (laughs) The Battle of Mid. Battle of Mid is Two. basically right, and we just got lucky that Angulo had his finishing boots on, and he was smart enough to, well, yeah, smart enough to put it on the crossbar purposely right on Duncan's forehead. No, he was Duncan. To his the big dunk is the man. I'm ready. To, I bought that Sea Cows kit. Mm. I'm, I was going to return it, but I'm ready to just go get his name on the back of it, increase the value by like a million. Yeah, I mean, that definitely raises the value of that because of the performance that we had in that fucking yeah. pre-match. Uh, yeah, we, 80% of the game got outclassed by mm-hmm. a team that was underperforming. Apparently, they, they just can't win at home, right? Yeah, it's it's been tough for them to win at home, apparently. They're having the same issues that we're having at home. Yeah. Um, Adrian Heath definitely had our number, I would say. In the first... For the first half, 100%. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely think Oscar made subs. <laughs> he definitely made subs. Um, yeah. They were right, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. The order of them is the only thing that I have. And Lions Blog, Gavin at Lions Blog, brought up a really good point. I said that Felipe probably should have been our last sub. He probably shouldn't have been our first sub. In my opinion, like, we need a goal. Let's get an attacker out there. Let's bring Duncan on. Enrique's not influencing the game. That should have been our first sub, in my opinion. Yeah, that's not how Oscar works, though. No, and he brought up a really good point by saying we were struggling in the midfield. We saw that statistically at halftime. We only had 11% on each side of the midfield mm-hmm. on each, you know. Or attacking. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. The attacking zones. Yep. Um, so we were being forced to the wing, whether that was – tactically or not like we couldn't control the midfield we couldn't get a string of three passes together in the midfield no shot so bringing felipe on actually solidified that midfield and maybe increased those connections for us to be able to progress the ball forward um which is a good point and i agree with that still need the uh, striker for me like it should have been a double sub right there with felipe and then someone else right if that's if that's your mentality like let's solidify the midfield but you also need to bring on somebody that can uh, influence your attack. Mm-hmm. So, but I mean, I think everybody was a was the right sub. Honestly, again, if you want to go midfield, I probably would have gone Thor Hollinson over Felipe. But at this point, can't really question it. We got yeah, the result, I guess. Would. Yeah. Uh, no, go ahead. Thought you were gonna say something. No. I mean, we kind of got the result from Thor Hollinson yeah. being able to actually play in the final third of the field mm. who what i want to see like who exactly he came on for what the exact sub was, was felipe on for ojeda mcguire on for mo? enrique huh didn't he come on for mo you said i saw what no thorlson came on for mo in the 87th what that's what i said you said oh, well, I just said Felipe came on for Ojeda, oh. and then you were like, oh, I thought he came on for Mo. So I thought you were talking about Felipe. No, so in it. Your original 87th Dagger minute, Thorlson came on. We scored in the 88th. <laughs> yeah, it's, too, that's, it's just a little late for that. Yeah. that. That's another one of the only gripe, really, I guess you could say, is it's just a little late. You're, you're looking to make a change, man. You got to. That's usually the one where you're just kind of like, all right, we'll see out the 1-1 one, one draw because you're bringing in. Uh, it basically, it's an 8 for an 8, but Thorlson's just a little bit younger, can move a little bit faster than uh, Mo. Um, f- for Mo to go 87 minutes, though, I feel like <laughs> we're getting up to senior citizen Mo. Yeah, so we haven't really seen us manage Mo's minutes this season. Do you think 
we're saving Thor Hollinson for the later part of the season? I'd hope not, because getting points now are still as important as getting points later in the season. So if you're just going to rotate them, just rotate them normally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think like game in, game out. Yeah. Tactically, like have them on the same path, but just, Stack, you know, yeah. Mo starting here, Dan starting the next one, Mo, Dan. Yeah. Or just <laughs> come on at half. I'm fucking with the Dan. Just, just Dan. Dan. No dagger, Dan. I like it. <laughs> Dan. Um, Why not? <laughs> last thing, I guess, uh, player-wise, I have about the game, Gaston Gonzalez. Finally found four, mate. Yeah. He doesn't yeah. like him, so. I th he got put into better positions this match, and he actually played a more attacking role, which allowed him to get into his game. We saw him put better balls into the box, the one that drifted all the way to Angulo, and Angulo put it back across, and then there was still... Did he get that ball across to Angulo when he chipped it off the crossbar? No, it was... Thrallson. Yeah. But there was still interplay with him. Or no, because he was no, off that at that was point. Petrasso. Yeah. So, I mean, it, Petrasso and him kind of have the same play style. I think Gaston, like Higher we said, is attacking. Side. Yeah. And he's coming off of the injury still. So, if you can find form, I'm all for it. Yeah, I definitely think he needs more minutes and more time with the team. But... For me, it was like he's just a very direct player. Like if he's not running straight down the down the sideline, like there's. So then you you change it. Like we've played that same way with Ruwal in the past couple of years, but now you have Gaston and he has a little bit more quality, better balls into the box, right? Better with the ball at his feet. So if we can just switch it to where the left side is our attacking side, then we we'll just just stick with that, and then uh, I think he can play better football. But again, I have the same gripe with that as I did with Juan, as there's so much more to the fullback position than it is just to run straight down the sideline and put a ball into the box. Well, then keep Thoralson drifting over to that left side, and then they can combine. Yeah, they but he could. But he couldn't combine. That's that's what I'm saying. When the simple passes were there to be made, well, did they have a nice triangle for the first goal? Yeah, in the fucking 70th minute. Pretty much like one two. Or one twos. Yeah, sixtieth minute. It yeah. finally took us to finally show a sign of quality. Yeah, so but yeah, give him a second. Yeah, give. Well, that's why that was his first game playing that position. And as the game went on, he continued to grow into that role. It, not his first game playing that position. He so played that. Is? He played that in position the entire season at his. Well, maybe if he, his, his first time for us. Yeah. So under Oscar, which is another story. For us, it's yes, it's different, but. You, to say it's his first time ever playing that position, it's not like we stuck him in there at fucking center back. He meant for this cross. All right. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> Clarification. Oh, it's <laughs> he's, definitely not he's, his first time playing He's a, he's a yeah. left wing back by trait. Like, that is what he plays. So, you would think we're putting him in a position to succeed. Like I said, I want to see more time and more minutes from him and stuff like that. But if that's all we're going to get from there, then it's like I may have overestimated his ability coming into the season because I definitely thought he was going to be a super influential part of our team. And he can still get there. Yeah, he can. Kind of off top, not really off topic. At one point during that game in Minnesota, there was a point where Angulo and I believe it was Gaston kind of switched sides. When we so Angulo was playing on right on the right mainly, right? Mm -hmm. So was it? He was switched over to the left, and Gaston was on the right, and we were like, what the hell is going on at that point? Yeah. Was that that? All right. Yeah. Because Angulo on the right, which where Facundo – was Facundo? I can't even remember if Facundo was playing. Yeah, he was, he was in the two. He was in the middle? Uh, that's right. Yeah. But Angulo on the right <laughs> looked yeah. better than Angulo on the left, which is that something we need to watch out for, and Facundo gets pushed out of that position now that Angulo's in form, or – I mean – the informed man has to play, in Correct. my opinion. So, it's got to be him. I definitely like Angulo at that that wing back spot. You know what I mean? Like he's got to work rate. Right. He can get up and down the pitch. Mm -hmm. I, it, it's like you said, we can't have all these attackers on the field at the same time. It's somebody said it. We have Atlanta syndrome. They're just buying players to buy players. Buying players. a bunch of attacking players, throwing them all out in the field, and expecting it to well, work, and it just doesn't happen like that. I guess. From the perspective of Angulo is still currently right now leaving in the summer, then that can't it, happen. It, it can't happen. But if it does, then I guess having this plethora of attackers helps because once he leaves, then you've got to rely on the likes of Gaston, Facundo, Heda out wide. 
if Enrique can play out wide, then we can. Then you have the ability to not have such a bloated attack. Because Berengula has been such a, inf I'm saying influential because it's sometimes good, sometimes maybe shit with him, <laughs> but he's been influential to say the least. I think the only negative, the drawback to him is he does too much on the ball sometimes. 100%. He tries to turn into like prime Neymar and it's like. Especially in a offensive there. third. Yeah. It, How many times did we try to see him dribble out of the, our defensive third last game? Too many. Yeah, that's something else, too. We can't clear the ball for shit, man. Whole It takes three to four chances for us to finally get the ball cleared. Like, And then it's a shit clearance, and then we have to do it all over again. Yeah. And my whole thing with the fucking clearance part, if you're going to clear it, make it good. But we're playing a three-back with two wing-backs and two like midfielders right there. And if they would just fucking look, there's options. So if the long ball is not working, you're fucking clearing it to just defend again. You have space and time. Look around and find someone to play Take it your to. Because yeah. they just fucking kick it. That's. I feel like that's mainly Schlegel, correct? Oh, just moving just it the hell out of there? I think yeah. it was Evan. Yeah. He can't find match, but like Schlegel isn't smart enough to look up and find a pass. No offense, mate, if you're listening. But, but you're a professional <laughs> footballer, you know what I mean? Pick your head up, please. Pick your head up. <laughs> so it does. It just... <laughs> it goes yay. It goes yay. Yay wide. I yeah. want to tell you something. Slagle was our highest rated defender in that game. That's an, uh, interesting. Is that on football? Yeah. Um, Let's check something. So I was going to talk about, like you said, we had a three back and we had two midfielders right there. Like we should be able to play out the back and make the smart passes. Nobody on our team moves off the ball. No. You know who does? Duncan. Duncan. Dan. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but, but nobody on our team truthfully moves off the ball to create passing lanes. You know what I mean? Like, It's pretty much watch the ball move and then go from there. You see it with like Casemiro and Partey. As we expect Caesar to be that equivalent for us in the system that we play. They're not always going to receive the ball, but they're creating spaces for those lines to be, to, for you to break the lines with those passes. Mm -hmm. They're always making the movement. They're always creating that space. Caesar just kind of gets stuck right in between the center backs when we're trying to break out and we're trying to pass out. Then you see Mo just continuously making one straight run towards the sideline. Got this huge gap in the middle of the field for our striker to come into, but nobody's going to pass it there. Nobody, nobody's going to make that pass. And then we float out to the wing because we're forced out to the left. Or the right. Gaston standing out here on the left all by himself. We got an overlapping run. Nothing happening. Yeah. Like, nobody... Like, maybe we get an overlapping run. I wish we could get an overlapping run. We do, but they don't pass it. They just fucking pass they it just, back. They take the overlap. And then by the time they pass Facundo it back... Facundo just cuts in, plays the ball back into Mo. Mo fizzes it out. We just start passing between each other on the top of the box. I Give yeah. it away. So fucking... I feel like we need more of that overlapping on the wing and stuff like that, though, because we see so many times that we have one of our players isolated out there by himself with two defenders in his face. Like, Facundo's never going to make anything happen out there with two people on him every single time. Like, we should have the ability to isolate those, even if it's an inverted run, you know what I mean? Like, we exactly. never... They, they, like, the runs work. You'll see it with Arsenal. You'll see it with United where they overlap. You don't have to play it on the outside. If he's keeping that run, you can slot it inside, yeah. and he'll still be there play it back across the six or something. Like, shit works. We just decide to cut in, and we want to play with it on top of the box. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. Huh? Real quick. Going back to Angulo, I feel like from day one when he arrived here, Oscar set him up for failure. Because at his old club, I, f I don't know the name, but we saw a young player that – was able to make those progressive passes. And right when he got in into this system, it's like he doesn't know how to do that anymore. And I feel like if you train that way every day in practice and you got to play that way in this system, Mentality yeah, he's, gone. yeah, he's not going to do the you same can say shit. That with a lot of our players. Yeah. Like there's no risk being taken with any of our, the majority of our passes. Everything's safe, simple. 
play it back, Slow. play it side by side. The two side that do most is Robin and Antonio. Exactly. Speaking of, I'm transitioning back into that because you guys moved on, but I was looking at the ratings. You said on Footmob Schlegel was our highest rated player. On um, what? Defender. Defender. Sorry, apologies. Um, on Sofa Score, uh, it is Schlegel with a 6.6, Robin with a 6.6, and then Antonio with a 7.1. And then on who scored, it is Schlegel 6-5, Robin 6-3, Antonio 6-8. So I don't know That's if harsh. Foot Mob's just on crack. Pro- it, probably, it probably listened to all the fans that were saying Schlegel was great. <laughs> that game. Yeah. I think – I think I don't know what the algorithm difference is between the three of Sofa Score, who scored, and Foot Mob. But sometimes I think Foot Mob's ratings are just a little different. Yeah. You know. It seems to be that way. Foot Mob seems to be a little different in general with a lot of its stat lines and stuff yeah. like that. So, but it's the easiest on the eyes, though. That's, it looks the best. That's for sure. <laughs> so, if you want to sponsor us, although your stats may not be, your stats are great. It looks great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck hell. So. What was the formation we played the other night? So it was 3-4-2-1. 3-4-2-1. Is that it? No, I'm trying to think of a way to have Angulo and Kakunda on the pitch at the same time. If Like this? uh, Yeah. But then they're taking out the same spots. (coughs) And they're making the same runs. Mm, so then throw Facundo on the other side. No. No, because I want... Mm, I don't know. What do you... Well... Mm, Bro, don't. I don't know. This is, what, this is what Oscar needs to find out. So what if it was a... I fucking can't. What if it turned into a 3-4-1-2, and then instead of Enrique playing off of Duncan, it was Facundo playing off of Duncan? I would rather have Ojeda playing as a second striker. Then throw him up there, and then Facundo in the one attacking mid roll. I'd agree. I feel like Facundo's a little bit better of like receiving a ball and getting out of spaces that could open up either Ojeda to run in and find Duncan making a run. I just feel like if Facundo's up there, he's going to want to receive the ball and try scoring himself. Well, anywhere in that little triangle, you can rotate. So, if Foot Mom has him up there, but he's actually playing the attacking middle role, then a good fluid midfield will rotate. Like I was watching, of course, United play the other day. You'll see Erickson, you'll see Bruno drop deeper while the other, you know, push up the field. You'll see that rotation happen naturally in a game, which I don't think we see with Orlando City. No, we don't Hold see on. we don't see a, a whole lot of that. We see people covering when people are out of position, but we don't see people again moving, creating a fluid space. Midfield. Yeah. And fluid anywhere, fluid attack, fluid midfield. Our back line is not fluid. <laughs> I mean, so, yeah, I don't know. It's got to be something to, to figure out with with them, Facundo and Angulo. I mean, yeah, we obviously want to see Facundo and Angulo on the field at the same time. But if that doesn't create the best opportunity for us to win games, then it's just – it's a decision we have to make, you know what I mean? Question, if when Mikey's um, healthy, do you think that's something that he could do, play that right wing back spot? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think he could do that better than Angulo? No. Personally, no. I think he's better suited for that inverted fullback, you know what I mean, where he steps up, he joins in the midfield and can play in there when our midfielders progress rather than asking him to fly up and – up and down the sideline. I think if you let Mikey uh, cook, well, kind of progress as a player over the next couple of years, maybe. But I think Agulo is just a little bit more of a finished product than Mikey currently. Mikey's still a very good right back, but asking him to do that role week in, week out is a little bit tougher than to do the same with uh, Angulo. The thing is, if Angulo's gone in the summer, then who else do we have? have Exactly. I can't let that the question. You got to figure it out with his, uh, his club. club right now. Yeah. Yeah. 
that's the other thing too is like all right so if a three back is what we want to do now then why did we build a team this way the three back was something that y'all were talking about last year correct and it should have not been, the year before too yeah it should have been something that was done with those teams you know what i mean mm. like we see who on that not typically your most de- best defender you know what i mean yeah that's giving you that so soli- you, you know people back there that can rotate over he can stay higher up the pitch i mean joao he could have played that third center back for us last year you know what i mean and then we could have played somebody else over there could we doing it right now yeah so we we were better suited as a team for that last year this year with the team that we built we're better suited for that 4231 we just don't fucking play correctly with the players that we have on the field truthfully Which is just a coaching problem truthfully it should be an antonio and Robin splitting back there. Mm-hmm. If you're two fullbacks pushing up and joining in the midfield with Cesar Araujo, then you're playing Dagger, Dan, and Moe. They're both eights that progress up forward. Your wingers stay wide. Your striker drops into the places to progress it. And then when you're in the box, he's a fucking target man. You know what I mean? You see millions of teams around the world. Um, not millions, but thousands of teams around the world play with that exact ideology. You've seen Barcelona do it to the top level. You've seen Manchester City do it to the top level. And now you're watching Arsenal and United do it at the top level. You know what two words you said right there that Orlando City probably most likely will never be with Oscar head coach? Top fucking level. level. (laughs) So if this is top level lines of thinking. Oscar doesn't have that, mate. Why? He's out of his depth. Grand Potter? Hell no. He was out of, what do you mean he was out of? Well, I thought it's you meant bring him in. Oh, hell I mean, no. That's, no, that's no, what no, I thought no, you were no, talking no. about. Oh. No, I, they were just both out of their depth. That's what I'm saying. You just said Graham Potter like you wanted him in. Yeah, because how many times did we hear out of out of his depth with Graham Potter? But the way hey, you said it made it sound just like the, you wanted The two him are in. just associated with each other now. Honestly, but Oscar needs to be his assistant. That would be the <laughs> assistant <laughs> on their sailboat with no sail. Sailboat down to Guatemala. How quickly would you jump off a building if Graham Potter joined as an assistant? Uh, I'm telling you, I've said someone needs to drive me to explore, you know. <laughs> no, I don't think <laughs> I can Graham say Potter that. Graham Potter is an assistant. <laughs> Chris Armis. No. Oh, <laughs> another. that was a terrible <laughs> for you guys. Is oh, he don't, still? Don't remind is me. Is that where he went? He, didn't he get sacked with Jesse? <laughs> <laughs> the guy's just useless, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, obviously people are going to hear us talking about these top-level teams and be like, well, you, oh, they can't do that. It doesn't. It doesn't work like that. Well, then tell me what LAFC is doing right now. Tell me what St. Louis is doing right now. Tell me what Seattle has done for decades in this league. Tell me what Columbus does for decades in this league. Portland attacking football. They built a fan base. You know what I mean by playing attacking football. It works. Why are we sitting here and continuing to play this defensive, get out class for 80 minutes, find two passages of play, and then win a game? And no Dude. one wants to watch that either. Like, how are you supposed to attract people in your stadium if you're playing shit football, <laughs> losing games? No one's going to want to watch, like, come and watch you games there. Casual yeah. fans will not come back. Yeah. No. If you're fucking wanting to play that way, why go out and buy a player like Facundo or Ojeda? Or have someone like Angulo or en- Enrique. All are so creative players. players. We're just going to fucking waste their talent. Yep. I mean, again, people get mad because I make the comparison to Arsenal, but we have the equivalence of MLS-type talents to play that style of football. Do you, you want to say this again? Are you going to say this for like the 90th time? Yeah, <laughs> I am. Because if we fucking played anything remotely like that style of football, I don't know. Maybe we wouldn't be in the situation we're in right now. So who was the uh, Arsenal guy that we did on the Patreon video that you wanted to bring in? Uh, Stupenberg. Albert. He's, He's not leaving. Here now. He's not leaving, son. We need him. We got a title to win. <laughs> title to the bottle. You're on your way. Another 2-0 lead dropped. You know, there was a statistic. The only Wait. thing I have to say about that, there was a statistic that no London club has won every single derby away since 1970. So that tells you how hard it is to go and do that, yep. and we were one win away from doing that. 
So sucks to suck, mate. It's you it's gotta be quicker than that. <laughs> <laughs> it's unfortunate, but it just tells you how hard it is to go and do no, that. Oh, you are one. Uh, no, because you still have to play us again. Yeah. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> What's the point? Shut <laughs> you're, up. You're, 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 <laughs> who? Um. No, but realistically, like I said, if we played, does Chelsea beat Middlesbrough and Burnley? No. Not a chance. <laughs> <laughs> no shot. So y'all are a championship side. Uh, yeah, honestly, it would be if we won the <laughs> Champions League and got relegated. What a season <laughs> that would be. <laughs> so that also kind of shows how shambles your club is in right now because you're in a relegation battle Not with yet. West Ham. Not yet. And you're you're celebrating points awarded to them. Not yet. No, I'll be s- even if we were second right now, 15 No, not Okay, if we were in Champions League spots, and it was still you and City fighting for the title, I, I would still be happy because it's just you guys bottling a title. That's all it is. At this point, that's all I, That's all we have to cheer for. Dog, we're going to beat Real Madrid 3-0 <laughs> tomorrow, and everything's going to be fine. <laughs> What's the aggregate right now? 2-0. Oh. Bro, Madrid. If I'm yeah. fucking Frank mm-hmm. Lampard, okay. I'm. You'd, huh? I'm. Hey! Pause. Pause. You guys are fucking. Child. Children. Yeah. Children. Anyway, continue your, your statement. He did it again. What? No, you're not going to say it now? What? What? He said, if I oh, was. If Frank I Lampard, was. Yeah. Frank Lampard, I would be getting them boys ready to play. Bro, you're playing at Stanford Bridge. You English is tough. Yeah, I, I don't know what the fuck to <laughs> yeah, say to him, but you're at up, yeah. fucking Stanford Bridge. <laughs> you're there. Frank and Lampard you're playing for Chelsea. <laughs> Frank Lampard goes in the tunnel at halftime. We're at Stanford Bridge. <laughs> 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 he just walks out. <laughs> That's it. Only words said to him the entire time. I mean, yeah, you obviously, like, you got... Nothing to lose. Go out there and play for your lives. Like, this is the only thing you guys have a chance at winning. Not even a chance at winning, but you the only thing you're left hey. in. The but two times that we've won it, we weren't even supposed to come close, so. I just yeah, can't. but w- the difference is you weren't in a relegation battle. I just I'm can't not wait. Not f- in a relegation battle yet. <laughs> <laughs> yet. Yet. <Two> yet. <laughs> I just can't wait for the one nil tomorrow, and then uh, their, hopes and dr- and their hopes and dreams just go out the window, because then it's like, well, we're not fucking scoring four. No, it's Madrid one nil tomorrow. They're just, like, it's just going to be another performance where they ha- can half-ass it and still kill us. Chilwell's out due to the red uh, card. Yeah, fuck. What Kukurea fuck. is going to have to start. <laughs> Dumbass. <laughs> the Spanish mop makes his return. I can't. No, nah, Imagine he has the game of his life. Nah. He's the reason Chilwell got the red. Play p- yes, <laughs> yes, he is actually. <laughs> Play Pulisic, left back. Fuck it. <laughs> he actually God. looked. He looked decent. You just, you just who, want to get who y'all play? Bro. on the weekend. Oh, yeah, yeah. it's better than that. Fucking. I don't know. Mop. I'm trying to forget. <laughs> Brighton. That's what uh, he, yeah. Pulisic looked decent against Brighton. He did. He, sh- he yeah. should have done better on that chance. You got to put that away. The one that hit the frame. No, the one that went. Wa- the header that went wide. Oh, I thought he hit the frame for one of them too. Either way, back to Orlando City. Sign Messi so we can win games. <laughs> That's just not going <laughs> to help us. <laughs> Respectfully, <laughs> me- Messi wouldn't help us. Or Saudi Arabia. Uh, yeah, right. Messi wouldn't help us. My ass. You are... Oh, that he is the would? worst take no. you've ever had on this show. No, that is the worst take you've ever had on With this Oscar show. With Oscar as a manager. Uh, uh, nope. Uh, because Messi uh, literally would... <clears throat> bro, he would throw the right wing back. Through our through the entire he'd play him at right mid. Oscar would say some shit to him where he's like, "What the fuck is he on?" And ju- everything's just a pass back. Nope, he is going to be. He would run through. You could play him at center back, and he would still run through this entire league and score a fucking banger from outside the box. Tell me I'm wrong. He'd pass it back first though. Oscar would conform him to. No <laughs> fucking way that Oscar the park the bus can ruin Messi. <laughs> there's no shot. If PSG can't ruin Messi, then there's no. They don't way have Oscar, course. do they? They don't. We have Oscar, the one man that can ruin the best player on this earth. Honestly, I want to see. I want us to sign Messi. Get just so we Graham, can end this Graham debate. Potter, no. <laughs> get Graham no. Potter as assistant coach, <laughs> and Chris Armis. No. Let's figure out who's Let's more effective. We can get a YouTube Messi video. Messi or other manager. <laughs> we can get a YouTube video out of this. Can Oscar Pereja ruin Lionel Messi? And then we we just make YouTube videos off of it. 
have a whole season and we're chilling. Being Make chilling. it a what is it a FIFA career mode? Just sim it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ooh, ooh. They're They're fucking no, because they actually play competent in FIFA. Orlando, Fine, because they don't have called? the real Oscar Pereira. Can you change manager in career mode? Yeah. Someone fire him tonight, please. One of you two get on career mode and fire well, Oscar. I'm. Oh, I, so yeah, I was going to say, man. currently, I'm already <laughs> the manager of Orlando City. So. I don't know. I got a better job. Then, so. He said, I got a better job. <laughs> <laughs> Still in my first season with Orlando City, and I'm top of the league right now, son. <clears throat> With like a plus twenty goal differential because my back line is fucking phenomenal. OC fan TV for manager. I thought we've we've done said it, bro. Loki, just all four of us is the manager that'd be a of the club. Scary ass <laughs> bench. <laughs> Walk in at halftime. You're at Exploria Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> Bryce walks Damn out. Right. Kanata whips out the um, the fucking board. <laughs> the, the tactics, tactics board. <laughs> the fucking pep. Zach walks around with I his hands behind no. his back. Everyone monsters now. <laughs> <laughs> just give everyone monsters that have done. Dave just hits him with the ancillary. I'm just going to stare like this. <laughs> hit, him with the, <laughs> hit him with the eyebrow raise. <laughs> nice. Fuck. Yeah. Uh, Orlando City will be a much cheaper option to uh, Oscar Pereira. We all only require a million dollars each a season. So. And our buyout clause is 69 mil. There you go. Buy us Shit, out I'd from. I'd do it for like 30 bucks a day. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yeah. We, uh, it'd be four <laughs> mil a season, much cheaper than what you're spending on Oscar <laughs> right now. Is it? I, I, is it? I, I don't no, think that is. No, 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 no it is no. because now you're getting four managers for the price of one. Bro, I'll do it for like 100 grand. Nah, dude, you offer me 32, 32K to go coach Orlando City, it's done. I do for like fifty. I want to live a little. You do live a little by making that team win the league. But that's uh, also stressful as shit. Because then, <laughs> if if we were to become manager, we'd come back here start recording about how shit we're of a job we're doing. <laughs> 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 now we do that live in the locker room with the team watching. A live pod. Yeah. <laughs> inside the locker room. But was, we win the fucking league and we get a job somewhere yeah, else, and I'm they're saying. like. Done. Only one of you. And we're like, nah. Yeah, not how it works. <laughs> it <laughs> works with all four. <laughs> we need Bryce to tell us what stadium we're playing at today. <laughs> I was trying to find how much Oscar makes, but, the, you know, MLS and <coughs> information is just, is just not, just not available. Yeah. That's a, that could be a meme video. Ah. That, uh, that, that could be a meme video right there. Yeah, what, what? Orlando City Fan TV's managers of... No. <laughs> Just thinking about that, you know what I mean? Shit, I'll pull up in a suit. I'll be in this. <laughs> of course. Um, it's going to be fucking hammered mid-game. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking idiots. <laughs> Yonten, come on. You got to get some of this in you. <laughs> Duck dead. Huh? <laughs> Give him a little <laughs> liquor on the pitch. Oh, good lord. You see? No, you guys have fucking <laughs> fucked up minds over there. It's episode 69. I mean. That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. It's excusable, this episode. Um, Anything else you guys have to say on Orlando City? Hope you City? enjoyed episode shotguns 69. Shotguns at halftime. Oh, <laughs> mandatory <laughs> shotguns yeah. at halftime. <laughs> And if they don't drink alcohol, they can shotgun a monster. No, they're drinking alcohol. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you, most of them aren't old enough to drink. Say, isn't, <laughs> isn't Mikey like Mikey's 20? 19, 20. 19, yeah. yeah. We'll give him a non-alcoholic beer. Give him a Heineken Zero. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Terrible. Uh, yeah, it was a decent episode 69. Just another, hun- another 100 episodes until we can celebrate this again. So we haven't even... Oh. We're only 69 episodes in. I know. We haven't even That's hit 100 yet. That's how math yet. works. Oh, shit. Just feels like we've done way more. We, we have. <laughs> yeah, <that is> fair. <laughs> Just don't record them or there's no audio. Or Those days we've are... We've probably gr- done 100. Nah, yeah, we're, we're, close we're closing in. We're closing in. 85. Yeah, I was going to say, we're probably around the mid-80s right now. Yeah. But thank you to everybody that 
supported us from the start. Thank you guys that are new. We appreciate all the interaction. And then especially thank you to you, those of you that joined us on Saturday for that watch along. Uh, sorry for the audio at the beginning. We did figure out our issue on that. That will not happen again. But thankfully it was manageable through the rest of the... Yep. the re- but if stuff like that's going on, especially on a live, man, just drop a comment. Tell us. We you saw us fixing the the chat in the middle of the episode. Like we're not ashamed to do something in the middle of something like that to make sure you guys get quality content. But yeah, it was a lot of fun, man. I really enjoyed that. I definitely am looking forward to doing that again. Yep. I think Dave coming in on the next one too has definitely added content. Maybe not good content, but content. You're an asshole. <laughs> well, I mean, I Fuck just said you. I just said added content. content. That's yeah, fair. I didn't say yeah. good content. Yeah, he didn't say <coughs> shit. Yeah. Jackasses. <laughs> Jackass. Jackass. <laughs> hey, we also got some ideas for merch that we're working through. So mm-hmm. if you want to know about stuff like this, you should probably hop in our Discord. Yeah, it was one of the designs was put in the Discord last night to get your guys' thoughts. So, if you were interested in stuff like that. Hop in our Discord, man. Like it's we, free. it's free. You get to talk to us. You get to talk to other people, other Orlando City related people. It's fun. It's a really good vibe. It's a good good community that we're starting to grow there. So, hop in, be a part of it. And it, the the Discord is free, yeah. but if you join our Patreon, which is now only three bucks a month, only three. It's pretty. That's pretty a relative. You know, like a, I could afford that, and that's a good deal. So uh, that's a good deal. Okay, uh, let's calm down. <laughs> in all honesty, I don't know if you could. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's rude. Um, yeah, three bucks a month. Uh, you get access to the private channels in the Discord, things like requesting content for our Patreon videos, voting on content, um, and then uh, you get a call in to the pod. Uh, I was actually going to ask the lads after this exactly how we're going to do that because I was working on some stuff earlier today. Um, but yeah, we're working on that, getting like forms set up for it so we can know who's coming on when, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so yeah, only three bucks a month and you get access to all that stuff. And yeah, that's all I gotta say. And again, it doesn't take away from the content that we've been doing. We will continue to do the podcast. We will continue to do fan reacts. We will continue to post on all social media platforms. But it's just more content. Um, some of it's more MLS based content. Some of it may not even be MLS based content. It's just more content from us. If that's what you enjoy, you know, cons- seeing. Yeah. We appreciate those of you that do or that are in there, but obviously don't feel ob- obligated. It's we're still going to be the same with or without the Patreon. So, mm-hmm. but if you like what you saw here, make sure you hit that like button, turn on that notification bell. We will be outside Gate C on Saturday, so make sure that you get there, get there early, line up. Let's uh, we we tried to start it on the last one, so let's go ahead and put this announcement out here right now so everybody can see it. Stand behind the camera. Well, yes. No, I'm sorry. Front. Don't stand behind. <laughs> like, stand. Yeah, stand in the frame. Stand no behind the lens. Me. Yeah. Stand. Behind me. Stand behind Zach and whoever is talking. Let's create that atmosphere over there. Let's everybody be there. The shot looks way better, and it gets more people involved. That way, you guys don't have to feel like you're standing over there waiting on a line. Him and I will be standing over there, so when you see us, just come over there, stand there with us when we get a group started. You know, Obviously, it'll be easy to find us. Yep. Um, give us a follow on Instagram, at OCFanTV, on Twitter, at OCFanTV22, on TikTok, at OCFanTV. If you're listening to us, then you obviously found us on Spotify, Apple Music, whatever the hell else you found. we were streaming on. If you're watching this, then you know our YouTube. But thank you guys again. Check out the Patreon link. Get in Discord, and uh, we'll see you on the next episode.